Manche, and welcome to the Métis Alive YouTube channel. Before your tutorial gets started, I just wanted to say thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us and allowing us to share in your crafting journey. And hey, check out our Métis Alive Etsy shop. We have so much going on over there. We have beginner beading kits, as well as kits for advanced beaders. This is a beading kit project for beginners. And over here, we've got the beaded pouch for experienced beaders. We also have a kick and capote line and we have do-it-yourself capote kits as well. We also have a sashi shawl line. Say that five times, sashi shawl, sashi shawl, sashi shawl. <laughs> Anyways, you got to check out the Sashi Shaw line. They're just beautiful. And we also have do-it-yourself Sashi Shaw kits. We have Tonsei greeting cards that are all hand-stamped. And we also have other items um, on the Etsy shop, a variety of other items. And we call that our Touch of Sash line. So check it all out, metealive.etsy.com. And hey, check us out on Facebook too. We always have a lot of fun over there too. So Métis Alive Facebook page. All right, have a lot of fun and take life one stitch at a time. Hi there, my name is Felice Gladue with Métis Alive and today I'm here to talk about our beginner beading kits that we have on our Etsy shop, metealive.etsy.com. We have the orange shirt uh, pin, it's an orange shirt pin, and we have a strawberry keychain as well as a flower elastic hair tie that can also be used as a bracelet. All three of these kits use large glass beads. They're size six. So they're a great way to learn beading and because the projects can be completed in a short time because the beads are much larger and therefore the project doesn't take as long. So a great beginner bead project as well as um, experienced beaters who just want something quick and fun to do. I wanted to show you the actual difference in the sizes. So these beginner beading kits use the glass beads, size six, and our beaded pouch kit uses size 10 or 11 beads. So you can see it's quite a big difference. Let's start backing our project. You have finished beading your project. And if you're just starting here and wondering how to bead, then check out our tutorial on beginner beading. So you finished your beading on the stiffened felt and now you're ready to back it using the leather provided. So this flower project actually turns into an elastic or you could use it as um, a bracelet or an elastic for in your hair. So at this point, you're going to get your scissors and just start to cut the backing, the stiffened felt away from your project. When you do that, you want to make sure, oh, let me get my glasses. That always helps. There we go. When you start cutting your backing, make sure that you're not going too close where you're going to cut into some of your stitches back here, okay? You obviously don't want to cut your stitches because then all of your beadwork is going to unravel. So you might want to start with just a bigger outline like that if you're a little bit nervous and then go back around and trim a little bit closer. Okay, so I've got the, the wider um, 
trim there. And now I'm going to go just a little bit closer. Now with these bigger beads, we're not going to do an edging stitch. Um, with the bigger beads, they provide a clean border as it is. And once you put the backing on, it does look complete. Okay, now, just hold on. There's a little bit of blue here and that's just really <laughs> annoying me. So I'm going to use my snips. Snips are great to have in your beading um, toolkit because um, you can use the points, this part here, to snip rather than the whole entire blade. So because this is quite close already to my beading, I'm just going to flip it over so that I can actually see my stitches while I cut here. And then I can get right into the points there just by using the tips of these snips, they're called. All right, I think that's better. <laughs> All right, now we want to do the backing. So you have two choices. There's kind of the soft, suede side, and then there's the, the smoother side. So it's really up to you. This side is clean, um, and this side is soft and looks pretty, but just remember that the fibers of the leather uh, tend to come off, especially if it's on clothing, it's rubbing up against clothing. So if you're wearing something black, then you'll end off seeing these leather fibers. So completely up to you. On the strawberry, I did do the nice soft suede side. It's a keychain, so I didn't really think it would be um, too troublesome. On a pin, like the beaded shirt, orange shirt, I used a different type of leather on here, um, but I did use the smooth side because that would be up against your clothing. So this is going to be a hairband, or you could use it as a bracelet as well. So I think I'm going to go with this um, smooth side on the outside. So that being said, I'm going to trace on the side that won't show. So I like to do my tracing um, with Sharpie markers. I have the thicker ones and the thinner ones. On a piece that I'm going to have um, you know, like flowers and stems and leaves. I'll use the thinner one so that the marking, the black Sharpie marker doesn't show that the beads will actually cover the, um, the design. But this one here is just to... Um, trace out on the leather so we can use the thicker one. When you're tracing, make sure you put your Sharpie at an angle so that you're not rubbing up against the beads. Actually, I'm gonna use my fabric scissors. Another good thing to have in your beading toolkit is a pair of fabric scissors, a, a good pair. They do cost a little bit, but they're well worth it. Just make sure that you only use it, use these fabric scissors to cut fabric or leather. Otherwise, if you're cutting paper with them, they'll get dull. There we go. Now this will fit on there. Got to find out. Oh, well, there we go. The exact orientation. Now, as you can see, we've got quite a bit of black still left on there. So I'm going to go ahead and trim on the inside. 
I know it's a double step, but if you trim too much to start off with, you can't go back. So I like to just start wide and then trim it a little bit closer. See how this is? Okay, there we go, much better. Now again, I've got a little bit of a piece there that's bugging me, so I'll take my little snips that away. Now there will be a right and a wrong way of orientating your piece there. Now this is gonna be a hair tie. So at this point, I'm just gonna flip it over. This is the side that you're going to see. And I'm just gonna put a little dot in the middle you'll have an elastic in your kit, and that dot is where you're going to attach the elastic. Okay, now you wanna find the Glover needle. So the Glover needle will be a little bit thicker than the beading needle, and it's a little bit shorter, and it's very, very pointy. It actually has a diamond point on it. These needles are extremely sharp and so if you're a child using these please get a parent to help you in this section. These needles will actually go through your skin. So I use these needles when I make moccasins. They're very very strong. So at this point, we're gonna use the sinew, okay? The sinew that's in your kit is imitation sinew. And you have one piece, but there's many, many different strands to it. So you're going to pull it apart. And as you kind of start to do that, you'll see it'll naturally form into sections. So, we want a piece about that thick. You're just gonna pull it down. Okay, all the way. There we go. So kind of the thickness of dental floss. Now sinew, real sinew, actually comes from the tendons of an animal. So the tendons is, are what hold the muscle to the bone. So we're gonna thread this, and threading sinew is a lot easier than threading beading thread because on the Glover needle, the, the hole is a lot bigger. So we wanna go down and make uh, the knot. Also note that the sinew is a bit waxy. We're gonna come from the underside, so the side that you are not going to see. And we're not coming straight up the middle. We're actually gonna come up to the side. Because the middle is where you want your elastic to be placed. Now with Glover needles, I use the table quite a bit to use as an anchor to push the needle through. Okay, so you want to use a table that you don't mind getting little holes in, or you could use um, a pad of paper to put on top, or these scraps of leather also work really well for that, where you're just going to push the needle on the scrap of leather, and uh, that should protect your table a little bit better. All right, so we've got that up just beside the dot, and then now we're gonna put the elastic on there, go through the elastic, because we're attaching the elastic. And now you wanna put your needle just on the opposite side of that dot.
Again, I like to use that table as an anchor. And then this is where you need to be really careful. If your finger is on that needle, the needle is going to go through your skin. You don't want that. So make sure you're pushing, pushing on the outside of where the needle is. All right, there we go. Now that's attached. And so you just want to keep doing that. Again, you want to get as close as you can to that first hole or right in the first hole if you can manage that go around give it a nice snug pull there and go back through that same hole okay, you're gonna do that ten times all right one more time and that will be 10. Now sinew is nice and strong, so this really shouldn't be going anywhere. There we go. So flip it over, and now we're gonna tie our knot. So I make a loop, go through the loop, pull, and then pulling with, pulling the single tail over here and my fingers in the loop, at the same time, trying to get that middle section right where we want the knot. Then I'll put my finger on it and pull. Okay, so again, loop, put your needle through the loop, pulling on this tail with your two fingers in the loop, positioning this cross point where you want your knot to be put your finger on there and then pull okay i'm gonna do that two more times Let's see this is the third time here and one more should be good it's a nice chunky knot there there we go grab my snips Snip that off. So now this is attached. So the next part is to attach it to our actual beadwork here. So again, I want to find the right orientation here. It's like a puzzle. <laughs> Let's see, is that it there? I think so. Nope, it's not. There we go. Bing, 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 we've got a match. I like to place just a little bit of glue in the middle here, just to give your project a little extra strength. And so you can just use a white glue, like a white crafting glue, or a lot of uh, beaters like to use this this E6000. The nice thing about this is when it dries, it's still a little bit flexible, so you can still have some movement to your piece. Um, the only thing is it it is very um, carcinogenic, actually, so you want to use it in a very well-ventilated place, and you may want to just you um, use it for your children, like apply it yourself with your children because it is industrial strength adhesive. Okay, if you're worried about that, just use the white glue. The elder who taught me how to make moccasins actually uses this white glue and it works very well. So today I'm just going to use this white glue. I want to just put some in the middle. Don't put it on the edges because that's where we're going to do our stitching with the sinew and you don't want that piece to be hardened with glue because you're not going to be able to get your needle through. All right, stick that on there. 
Make sure you get all the glue off of your fingers. Don't want it to transfer to your beadwork and have everything all sticky. All right, just give that a press. Now, I'm finding that my leather is still peeking through on the sides there. And so I'm gonna just get these snips. Make sure you're pulling your elastic away from the scissors. And I'm just gonna trim again here. Good. Now we are going to get the sinew again. So again, you want to separate about the width of dental floss. Sinew, as I said before, is really strong. So the grandmothers used sinew for sewing moose hide jackets and moccasins, mucklucks. It's very, very strong. Now again, please use caution using this glove or needle. If you're a child, you need adult supervision while using this needle. Your parents might actually want to do this part for you. So we're going to hide that um, tail in between these two pieces of fabric here. And so I, you want to come up in between the purple and the white row. So we'll start from the inside. Now this first stitch is going to be um, very easy because we're just going through the stiffened felt. Tuck in that tail there. Okay, close it up. Again, we're using this scrap piece of leather to um, uh, as a foundation there for us so we don't poke our holes in the table. And what you're gonna do now is just put the sinew through the middle there, over the spine of that row of white beads. And then we want to not go, not put our needle right um, in line, but go two beads over, okay? Then, we're going to poke it up. Now it's going to be a bit harder because you're going through the leather as well as the stiffened felt. And you need to be very careful where you're placing your thumb. Because as you're pushing this, if your thumb is right over this sharp, it will go through your thumb. Okay. So again, if you're a child, this is the time you need your parents to help you with. So again, we're going over that spine, and then I'm going to go two beads over. Okay, put my needle in, and push up. Okay, I kind of pull the beads just gently apart, so the needle can come up through there. All right, and it's just a little whip stitch on the back. Now I'm going about, I'm gonna say half a centimeter from the edge. You don't wanna to be too close to the edge because you have the chance of it just ripping out. You don't wanna to be too far so that you have these long lengths of sinew. Okay, so again, I'm gonna go two beads over, so it's taken me into the middle there. Push down. You can see it's starting to poke up. That's, you know, where it's going to be. If it's not in the right spot, then you can change it and pull. You can pull quite tight on this sinew and you really do want to pull tight because this is what's keeping the project together. Again, I'm going to go two beads over. So that's going to take me to about here. Separate the beads just a little bit and then push up. 
and pull. Okay, you're gonna wanna continue that all the way around. The other tip is, is when you're pushing your Glover needle up, as I said before, I kind of separate the beading there a little bit so that you can see that the needle is coming straight up on the stiffen felt and not through some of the beading thread that the needle, the sorry, the beads are attached to. This pass, I did actually go through some of the beading thread here. And if you do that, don't snip it. Okay, do not snip it because you will just destroy your piece. All the beads will start to unravel. So instead, you're just going to leave that on. Okay, and if it's long enough, you can just tuck it in. Okay, in between the two pieces of fabric there and go around. Okay, but do not cut it. All right, so again, open up that beadwork there. Push the Glover needle through, making sure that it's going just through the stiffened felt. So in between, in between the ro rows of beads and not through the spine of the beadwork there. Pull that back. After a while, you'll be able to just eyeball. Oh, look at that. I did get it. And it's starting to unravel. It cut. Look at that. It actually cut my beads. So, no panic. No panic. This is a good lesson. <laughs> What we have to do is get back to our beading needle now. Okay, so with your beading needle threaded and a good chunky knot at the bottom, let's go back into beading mode here. So, of course, this is a bit of a pain, but it's better that we get at it now than uh, when somebody's wearing our piece, right? So, I'm actually going to start right here. Okay, I'm going to come up from here and go through those beads because I'm not too sure exactly where the um, that beading thread starts and stops. All right, so I'm going to go through those there. Just give it that spine. Then I'm going to load up these two beads that have fallen off. Get that back on there and go through. Let's see, I'm going to go through five beads there and pull. Okay, it seems like these beads are are all right and then I need to go back under so because I've already stitched this part here I'm just gonna stick my needle in between those two layers okay and then come back up right there as if I'm gonna start tacking Okay, now I'm going to go through those beads again, all the way through those beads. Now this is not an exact science, <laughs> you know, you just kind of play around with it and see what's going to, whoops, I got a little knot here, see what's going to work best. What I'm trying to do is get back down to those two beads that fell off and I want to tack those ones down. Okay, so I'm at those two beads that fell off. So now I'm just going to go back through. And I'm going to try to just go back through the stiffened felt here. 
Okay, and I'm gonna start to tack those down. All right, I've pulled them nicely. So I'm gonna come back up, go, and I'm gonna tack that down. So I'm gonna go around, go, That was my piece of thread that was loose, but I'm, again, I'm not gonna cut it. I'm just gonna keep it like that. Okay, tack that back down. Because I'm gonna keep that tail long, so I'm gonna um, sandwich it in between the stiffened felt and the leather. All right, do another tack there and then whoops I went through the leather there we go just the stiffened felt tack that one down all right now what I want to do is just so it will stay in place on the inside, I'm just gonna pass my needle just through the blue stiffened felt there and pull it. That will make it nice and clean there. And now I'm gonna do my knots. Okay, so let's get a couple knots. And then after the knots, what I'm actually going to do is Put some glue there. Okay, so I'm gonna get a couple knots. Then when I trim it, I'm gonna leave a fair size tail on there. Okay, it's gonna be tucked in, so that's okay. Now there's that loose piece there. I want to get that tucked in as well. So I'm gonna go back to my glue and just going to try to put it as far in as I can, depending on the length of that uh, loose piece there, but this one, I'm gonna get right onto the knot. Okay, and then this loose piece, whoops, this loose piece, let's see how far it'll go there. Okay, you might get your fingers a little bit gluey but that's a small price to pay to make sure that your project is intact okay there we go close that up press it down for a few moments here now let's put this beading needle and thread to the side and start back up here all right Keep on trucking, here we go. Okay, I'm getting really close to the end here. So I wanna show you how to hide your tail again. Whoops, there we go. So let's see, I think uh, two more I can do here. See how I'm pulling those beads just, just gently apart so you can see where the needle's coming up. Oh, that one's coming a little clo too close to the thread. <laughs> All right, pulling this sinew quite tight. We're on my last one here. Open that up a bit, see where I'm poking up through. Good. Haha, -ha, it's starting to come together. <laughs> it's exciting. All right, so now I'm finished going all the way around with that whip stitch. So what do I do with this um, tail here? How do I tie this off nicely? And so what I'll do at this point is just go through 
this sandwich here. So see how I'm opening that up? I'm going in between the stiffened felt and the leather. Go in between there and just coming up that same hole. That, giving that a nice tight tug there. And then I'm just gonna tie a couple knots on the outside. So you'll see the knot, but just slightly. It just will kind of blend in. Like that. And then I'm just going to very carefully slip this needle underneath this thread here. Got a little bit of the leather and that's okay. But it's just to keep that tail down and then just snip it there. Okay, it's kind of nice because it's waxy, like I said. I'm sure your fingers kind of feel waxy now. And there we go. Your elastic or even, you could use it as a bracelet. Could even be used as a bracelet there or a hair tie is complete <laughs> so awesome <laughs>now i just quickly wanted to show you as well our other projects that i featured at the beginning there our orange shirt again with the larger six size six beads and this one the backing as you can see i just simply glued it on there. I didn't use the whip stitch at all. I glued it, but I used the strong glue. So that's an option too, um, especially for younger kids. Instead of using that Glover needle, uh, the option is just you um, helping them with this strong industrial glue. Okay, and then there's also the strawberry keychain that we have. Now, I wanted to quickly show you how to back these keychain and the pin, right? So what I did with this is you've got this strip of leather here. You're going to put, whoops, put the key ring through the leather, like that, and then you're going to sew this together, okay, just with a whip stitch over and over and over and over again until it's nice and secure. Once that's secure, then you're going to have your leather. I'm just gonna use a piece of paper, but you'd have your leather again. And again, you're just gonna trace out your image here and then you would cut it out. And then you would stick this little tag in between, so you're sandwiching it in between the leather backing and your beading. So that's how it would be sandwiched in there. And then you would just do your whip stitch all around, including actually going through all four layers when you come to the tag. So you're gonna go through the backing, these two layers of leather, as well as the stiffened felt. Okay, so you wanna attach this backing, attach this backing to the tag as well. So it gives it just that extra strength. Then with the pin, if you're gonna put a pin on your project, what you do is, let's say the strawberry was being turned into a pin, you're going to cut two slits. So you would have a slit there and a slit there, like that. Okay, then you would stick your pin, open it up, Stick your pin through there and close it. 
turn it so it's locked and it doesn't poke you. And then you would just start whip stitching all the way around. Or like I said, with a pin, you could actually just glue. You could just glue your backing on with some industrial glue and um, have it like that. And that is it. So check out our Etsy shop, metealive.etsy.com. We have other beading kits there using the smaller size beads. So if you're having fun with the bigger size and want a bit more of a challenge, check out those kits. Thanks for watching. Bye.